Sometimes I'll be sitting during infusions only to hear the bell. That means someone has either made it out of this journey alive or they've decided it's time to quit. I always hope they're healthy and can move on with their lives. I want that more than anything for them. I want that for me, too. My dreams have shifted from seeking adventure to just wanting to live so I can see my children grow up, find their dream careers, get married, and have children. I'm not shooting for the moon. Not really. I told Mike all of this, and with tears in his eyes, he said he had a surprise. I've been looking at your bucket list. You know how we keep saying we'll see your family in Seattle? Well, I found cheap tickets. We're going to see them. We're doing it, Elisa. I hugged Mike because he's the most incredible person in the world. And before I knew it, we'd gone to Seattle and sat looking at a massive lighthouse with two of my favorite cousins, Lori and Gabby Brush. It saved many ships during storms, I heard an old man say as he passed us on the walkway. I scoffed and stared at the unimpressive building again. It didn't look newsworthy, but that's what I decided made it so special. A layman could deem it an old, irrelevant building. Instead, it tells a story of life, just like ringing the bell. I have seen the strangest beacons at such fortuitous times, especially recently, and they've carried me through the storms. The next day before we flew out from Seattle, Mike decided to surprise me. We're driving somewhere before we leave. Mike guided me slowly, and I carefully traversed a small portion of lush forest before reaching a different lighthouse from days before. A piece of driftwood became the perfect seat because it faced the wind, and as the salty sea air turned my earrings into tiny wind chimes, I felt liberated next to that lighthouse. Mike, I said, something's bothering me. What's that? He asked. I've gotten a few strange messages from people lately. They say I'm proof that God doesn't exist. Because why would God do something like this to me? My voice faltered. I'm not religious, but I do love God with all my heart. Why would my journey bring people further away from God? Even if I do die, death is a part of life. When will people stop getting mad at God for something that was part of the deal anyway? I have peace, and there's a plan. When I'm supposed to die, it'll be my time. Mike thought hard and stared out at the ocean. He doesn't believe in God, per se, but he is awfully supportive of people believing what makes sense to them. Elisa, if they've stopped believing after hearing your story, it isn't about you. They're placing their doubt on you. That's a burden you don't need to carry. I closed my eyes and faced the wind again. I pretended that lighthouse was shining right into me, guiding me in the storm. In my imagination, the light went through me, leading me to the person I meant to be without regrets burdens, or even sadness over cancer and doubt. I heard some people approaching because they started screaming excitedly. Mike and I followed their gazes to see a pod of orcas jumping up and dancing in the waves right before us. Orcas! I squealed. They're real orcas! This is the best day ever! I hugged Mike so hard, and he looked down at me instead of the magnificent fish in the ocean. You're so darling, he said. The orcas are my beacon for today. I no longer worried that I might never ring the bell or get better. I stopped thinking about people who supposedly lost faith because of my journey. I didn't even worry about the 18 pills I had to take every single day because, at that moment, everything seemed incredibly doable. Whether I'm magically healed someday or end up on the sticks, sooner than later, 
I'll keep looking for beacons because God's lighthouse is leading me home.